Hi, I'm Dr. Alastair Rue Clark from the Centre for Water Law Policy and Science at the University of Dundee. I'd like to discuss uh, the relationship between equitable and reasonable utilisation and no significant harm as they relate to the UN Water Courses Convention. So there was a lot of discussion when developing the text of a convention on which principles should take priority, the equity principle or the no harm principle. Upstream states tended to favour uh, uh, the equity principle. They weren't keen on, on the no harm principle because it might potentially lead to a curtailment of developments upstream. Uh, downstream states did not like the equity principle because it potentially allowed some harm to, to, to occur. So ultimately the convention sought to find a balance between the principles. And I think it, it provided quite an effective balance. Article 5 provides that states must utilise their waters in an equitable and reasonable manner. And then Article 7, 1 provides that watercourse states shall, in utilising an international watercourse in their territories, take all appropriate measures to prevent the causing of significant harm to other watercourse states. Article 7 in uh, subparagraph 2 then goes on to say that states that to provide that where significant harm nevertheless is caused to another state, the state who causes such harm shall, in the absence of agreement to such use, take all appropriate measures, having due regard to the provisions of Article 5 and 6, so essentially the principle of equity, to eliminate or mitigate such harm, and where appropriate, discuss the question of compensation. So while priority is therefore given to the equity principle, there are a number of important conditions. Firstly, under Article 5 itself, states must take into account the interests of watercourse states concerned, consistent with adequate protection of the watercourse. Secondly, under Article 5.2, states must participate in the use, development and protection of international watercourse in an equitable and reasonable manner. Article 5.2 stipulates that such participation includes the right to utilise the watercourse and the duty to cooperate in the protection and development thereof. Thirdly, um, this, this obligation to protect is further supported in Article 20 and Part 4 of the Convention on the Protection of Ecosystems. And then fourthly, pursuant to Article 7, states must seek to eliminate or mitigate such harm and where appropriate discuss compensation. So the scenarios where significant harm may be considered consistent with a conven convention are therefore very limited.